Hello, I'm Dean from Bottom Line Marine Engineering on the Isle of Man. I'm going to show you how to make battery cables today, uh, specifically putting the lug terminals on the end of the cables in a professional way and then applying adhesive heat seal to keep the moisture out. Um, first point I would make is that uh, a decent quality battery cable is a must. Um, I like to use the uh, tin coated, um, specifically for marine use. Uh, you can use this for automotive applications as well, you know, if you want to make a really good cable. Um, basically what it means is that the strands of copper are protected by a layer of tin, and if you do get any moisture on them, uh, they won't corrode as readily as if they were just bare copper. So, quality cable. This is 50mm uh, square cable, which is, uh, you know, for this application what we need. So, that's what we'll be using today. The uh, lug terminals, they're, uh, again, tin plated, um, good quality. You know, you've got to make sure that you get the right size hole, make sure that it's matched to the cable. So that's what the 50 is there, that's your 50 millimeter square. The 8 is the, the hole there. And again, make sure that you select the right size hole for going over the stud that you intend to use it for. Um, bit of a pet hate as a marine engineer when you, you come to a, a cable that somebody else has installed and it's got a, a 10 millimeter or a 12 millimeter hole over an 8 millimeter cable. Um, it's just horrible. So, uh, you know, try and select the right one. Um, so, and again, I always select these with a, uh, it's what they call an inspection hole in it, actually. It's designed so that you can see the cable's gone all the way into the fitting, and when you've crimped it, you can see it's not pulled back. Uh, but you can also use this for adding a little bit of solder, um, just, just to thoroughly secure the cable uh, electrically to the, to the lug. Um, you don't want to put too much solder on, because if you get it going all the way down the cable, you'll create a hard spot, and you can get broken strands doing that. So, just a small amount of solder, just to... Uh, uh, after crimping, just to just to create that perfect electrical um, connection, and it also prevents any any moisture from getting in if the heat seal does get compromised. So uh, that's the uh, the basic materials there. You also need a little bit of uh, adhesive heat shrink. Um, again, this is a bit of a, a, a strange thing. People always go a little bit too small with this. I like a nice big diameter uh, it looks like it's twice as big as you need but the point is once it shrinks down uh, that'll leave you with a really really thick wall on the cable on the uh, heat on the heat seal I should say on the insulation so you know that's a, a much tougher thicker wall um, you know and at the end of the day if you use too small a cable it's actually quite difficult to get over the end of the lug um, and also you can over shrink it and end up splitting the cable and ruining the whole assembly so uh, good quality uh, adhesive heat shrink there we're also going to need a blow lamp. Uh, this is a, uh, we're using map gas today, although you could just use normal um, you know, sort of uh, butane or, um, you know, probably even a, a good quality heavy duty soldering iron, but we'll be using map gas today. The crimpers that we're going to be using are uh, these hydraulic ones. These are fairly cheap actually. These, these are off, uh, you can get them off Amazon and eBay and other places. Um, they're, they're just, you know, maybe 30 or 40 pounds, um, maybe even less. You know, I've been using these for years. They're pretty reasonable quality considering that they're, you know, they're, they're made somewhere in the east. A um, little point to note here, you'll might notice that these are the 35 millimeter jaws, whereas we're actually crimping 50 millimeter uh, lug terminals here. So uh, it just happens that these actually fit the 50mm lugs really nicely and give a very, very secure crimp. So you kind of do what works and, you know, just because it says 50 on it, don't assume that that's going to work for you. It might not give the crimp that you're looking for. So sometimes you've got to use your own discretion on these things. Going to need some solder. Um, one thing I like to do with the solder, because I, I use this solder for lots of different things, so it's probably a little bit small for this application, but what I tend to do is uh, put a little twist there like that and then twist the, the solder up. It makes a kind of a, a double core twist like that and it uh, just makes it a little bit easier. It's not everybody's uh, method but uh, it's what I do and that'll work really well for uh, soldering the cable on. Um, also, decent pair of scissors for cutting the heat shrink and uh, a heat gun for shrinking the heat shrink down so uh, right so uh, done other little thing as well is a little bit of paper towel um, some sort of a degreaser I use brake cleaner but you'll see why in a moment okay let's just clear the area okay so well uh, this has actually already been cut to length uh, but uh, I 
can afford to take a tiny little bit off just to show you how the lops work. These are these are really nice quality lops or cable cutters. Um, you know, it's, it's a good idea to keep these quite sharp. I, I sharpen these regularly using a little Dremel just to go over the inside of the blades there. Pretty important not to touch this part because if you start removing any material here you create a gap between the two and it won't cut properly. So uh, important to uh, look after your tools. So I'll show you here. I know I can lose an inch off here no problem at all. So these cut absolutely with ease uh, if you keep them sharp. Okay, so here's one of the little uh, tricks that you're not going to see everywhere. Um, I'm going to show you, um, you know, basically most people would use a, a blade like this. I think you call them box cutters in America or a Stanley knife. We tend to use the, that, that brand name over here. Um, and you can just cut around and score around, uh, you know, and then pull that insulation off. It's actually a bit tricky to get the two cuts to line up when you go around there. And sometimes you can cut through and maybe cut quite a number of the strands of the copper. Um, maybe not the best way, and I, I don't like that particular way of doing it. I actually use these. Um, you've got to be careful you don't squeeze too hard and, of course, cut the cable off. But uh, now, what we're going to do here is we'll just, just make sure that we think we're cutting about the right amount and I think we are so I'll just squeeze a little bit there and then just rotate a little bit deeper you'll find that you can pop that off sort of a handy hint for the day that there we go that's how the professionals do it and then just need to make sure that we get all those strands into there like that. Sure, we've got them all in. We have, and sometimes just rotate it like that, just to just helps. And um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the strands have come right up to the little hole there, and the insulation is touching the uh, the end of the uh, the lug. So that's just how we want it. Okay, so we're going to crimp that now. With these crimpers, they've got a little uh, little release valve here, so you want to make sure that's tight, not too tight, but uh, just enough, and then just wind it in because you don't need it all the way out there to, to start off with and then it's a matter of just drop that through there and then just holding the, the cable in your hand there and putting your thumb on top making sure that this is just for aesthetics lined up nicely and a little tiny crimp there and then I kind of move it forwards further crimp What I'm doing is I'm just trying to do as wide a crimp as I possibly can. See, they haven't quite bottomed out. I just moved it back. They haven't quite gone together actually, but that's a really firm crimp on there. So uh, you'll see there, that's a really pretty crimp. It's like a kind of a squashed hexagon, which kind of suits the, uh, the profile quite nicely. Um, you know, there's no sharp edges. It's really got that. I mean, you could probably, uh, you know, sort of hang this off a, a hook and uh, and climb up it. You know, it's that strong. Um, but just to give it that extra uh, belt and braces, as they say, we're going to put a little bit of solder on there. So back in with the solder. I'm going to try now not to set fire to my camera, which would be horrible. Um, but we'll give it a give it a go. Don't know how well this is going to work for you guys seeing this I don't normally work backwards way around <laughs> that'll do okay yeah the camera's not going to get too hot there so we just want to warm this up heat it up there's my uh, northernness coming through there I'm afraid I hope everybody can understand me and uh, try not to catch the insulation like I just did there and we're just going to warm that up just keep warming it until the solder flows in. And that's uh, enough. You're not trying to fill the hole. Um, all you're trying to do is make sure that the cable is electrically connected to the, uh, to the lug. And unfortunately I did just catch the cable a little bit there and that's uh, not ideal. And then I'll oh, just rough the solder up a little bit there, and my uh, OCD is going to make me uh, want to just, just remelt that slightly. There we go, a little bit 
millimeter. Okay. That's lovely. Right, okay. Next step is going to be to remove the adhesive, sorry, the lubricant that they use when they extrude this uh, insulation out. And that would actually, over time, work as a release agent on the heat shrink. So we're just going to make sure that that's nicely degreased. We're going to accurately measure out about 50 millimetres of heat shrink. If you don't believe me, there you go. How about that? 51 millimetres. So that's going to go on there like that. And I tend to try and go for where the, where the little line is there. I try and get the heat shrink just on that line. Gently heat it. Don't want to try and do this too quickly, otherwise you will burn the heat shrink and make it go a horrible colour. Gradually shrink it down. What you're looking for is you want to be able to see the adhesive. Starting to come out to the end of the tube. And then you can see there the adhesive has come out so you know that it's under pressure and it's forced all the air out and it's stuck all the way along. And then while that's still setting, just squash it down so that it seals the, uh, the little hole there. So, and there we go, one uh, perfectly crimped, soldered and heat sealed lug terminal connection on the end of a battery cable. So that will give more or less infinite service life. Never going to get any moisture in there. It's going to remain very conductive. You're not going to get any moisture in between the crimp and the copper, creating the resistance to go up and obviously damaging your starter motor and making the engine difficult to start. That's the answer to a very long lasting cable. I hope you've enjoyed that. If there's uh, any uh, requests, anybody wants me to show, do any tutorials on uh, anything, uh, we, we do you know, Yamaha engines, Mercury engines, Yanmar engines, we do electronics, Lawrence, uh, Simrad, B&G electronics, NEMA networks, you name it, as well as you know standard electrical work there. So uh, if you want to buy any of this stuff, we sell completed uh, assemblies such as this. Uh, we do the separate lugs and the cable uh, all on our website. I'm sure you'll uh, find that if you Google us. Um, and uh, again, if uh, if you liked what you've seen, just uh, if you want to click the subscribe button, and that should notify you when there's uh, any more videos that we uh, that we put up there, uh, and you may find them interesting. So uh, again, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you have a nice time boating. Bye bye.